Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Double IAS lunchtime session. I am Dr. Shauna Pandya. I am the director of the Space Medicine Group here at the International Institute for Astronautical Sciences. But today I am your host in our conversations with Double IAS artists. Uh, you may remember me from conversations with our authors, authors series here at Double IAS. And today we are getting um, the privilege of having a conversation uh, with one of our very near and dear artists, Tom Foltz. Um, and hopefully over the course of this hour, you will see why he is so um, special and dear to AAS. Um, because he is a patch artist and we are going to get into what all of that means. But first of all, by way of background, um, let's introduce Tom. So he is a lifelong doodler and self-professed lifelong space nerd, has been to space camp five times, he also has a passion for geology, planetary geology, and astrobiology. Specifically, his undergraduate um, studies were in geology, uh, two years as a space camp counselor at Huntsville, Alabama during that time. Uh, completed graduate studies at Arizona State University, planetary geology and astrobiology, and also uncovered a love for teaching in STEM and aerospace education. Uh, he is spent 25 years in informal STEM education, taught lessons to over 80,000 student of students over 1,000 simulated space missions. He has been the lead flight director at the Challenger Learning Center in Arizona, um, Phoenix, Arizona specifically, um, and the educational programs coordinator at Fort Wayne Botanical Conservatory. And finally, in 2012, he started as one of the original teachers at DOD Starbase uh, in the Indiana STEM program and has since been part of the expansion of that program to include for academies in four cities across Indiana and in 2018 was named the executive director of DOD Starbase. And finally, bringing it all back home in 2016, joined us here at IIAS, formerly called Project Possum, as part of class 1601 um, in the Scientist Astronaut Candidate Program graduate class and flew micro G in um, the Bio 103 parabolic flight campaign. So that is a lot. What well, that is all to say that not only are you an artist, you are uh, a STEM educator, a STEM professional, and uh, have a whole lot of background there. So Tom, welcome. Thank you for making time for us today. Thanks. Boy, you make it sound good when you say it all together like that. <laughs> Hey, you make it easy to work with. So today, uh, we're actually going to concentrate on the art side of STEM, and realistically, I should be calling this STEAM because you bring a huge part of that. And in fact, you have been integral to some of our patch designs, starting with the initial possum patch design, and then when we later expanded to IIAS, the International Institute for Astronautical Sciences, you also designed that patch. So let's take it maybe a step back and say, you know, how did you go from doodling to making patches? What was your foray into patch making? Um, well, through education, you always want some sort of graphic element. There's always something graphic. You're making PowerPoints or whatever. Um, but, you know, starting with Space Camp as a counselor, we always taught lessons about, you know, mission patch design and history. Um, and then when I started running my own programs at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, uh, I needed some sort of icons or, or images to, to help uh, promote those. Let me see if I can pull this up. I actually went through my closet this morning and um, found some of my old t-shirts from the late 90s. And you can see some of the very first uh, cool. designs back of those. Um, I think this was one of the very first ones. You can see it was really simple. That was back in the the, the dark ages, back before I knew Illustrator or anything. So um, I, I'm not even sure how I did that. But I think um, like for this one, we had four teams in our camps. There was a green, yellow, blue, and red team. So I wanted to get the colors in there. And um, so I started, you know, designing um, images for for our camps and for our different programs. And then it just blossom from that. I've always liked to draw things. And um, and when I came to, to Possum 1601, uh, at that time, uh, Jancy McPhee was, was there as part of the program. And one of the initial thoughts was to do a, um, 
SI art program. So I got talking to Jason about that. Uh, that, as far as I know, never really went anywhere. But when we rolled around to the, uh, the Bio 103 lesson or flight later on in October, uh, he started talking about a new branch he wanted to do in addition to Possum, which was uh, spacesuit evaluation. And that eventually became Otter. And, and so he said, hey, do you want to you know, help out with that? And I said, sure. Uh, <laughs> and just in an email, I, we, we didn't even have a name at that point. So we were throwing around all kinds of different things. Um, the first thing I sent him, I went through all my emails the other day too, um, was Project Pisces. Um, ah, I've never awesome. seen that. This is like the B-roll. This is amazing. Yeah, all the old ancient archive stuff. Possum um, investigations, a spacesuit. Wow. Uh, I would pay good money to make this a collector's item. <laughs> I'll talk to you after the show. I don't know, it's wait, a oh, I've got so many of these old things. Um, That's amazing. So, you know, here, here you got. So I just, you know, whip this up pretty quickly and and you know, doodle of a you know, fish in a spacesuit. You got Pisces, the <laughs> constellation in the background, which I added in there, sticking off the side, basically just to cover up the the old Link spacecraft that was sticking off the side of the old possum patch. <laughs> and, and you know, he said, "Hey, that's okay. I don't like the name. Let's see what else we can come up with." So. Over time, we would, let's see, there was another one, I think it was Malamute was um, was the name of the program for a while. Um, we had Marmot once, I think. And Marmot, oh, we're getting to Marmot. Yeah. Um, so then we changed it to Marmot and I threw out, you know, and the initial possum patch has the little cartoon possum character on it. So I thought we needed a little Marmot character, so I sent him that. And oh my gosh, that is cute. No, no, we can't do that. That's too cartoony, too Alvin and the Chipmunks. It's like okay. it's adorable. Uh, I thought so, but uh, um. <laughs> so then I sent him another one here, and you can see how it's starting to take it on. Um, and and so when I do these, I start with a really, really rough sketch, just to figure out, you know, spacing of things, how colors look together. Um, but this, you can see the the forward facing critter here in the middle. The idea here was we were thinking of doing some of it, you know, in space, some of it underwater. Um, so this is supposed to be like the underwater and this is up in space standing on the earth. So it's sort of combining the three worlds. Um, and that, at first I thought that was a spear gun and I had questions, but now I realize that's a geologic EVA sampling yeah. tool, which makes a it's lot more sense. Some sort of shovel thing. Um, <laughs> Not I was I was uh, was concerned I didn't know about the new uh, military branch of AAAS. The <laughs> well, yeah, the spear gun is to to wipe out the old Pisces from from before, I guess. <laughs> spear fishing person, space fish. That is really cool. And this this one's familiar. I think I've seen this one before. Right. This one is what what we sort of came to as the final marmot design. Um, manned analog research mission operational testing. So you can see, you know, it goes from the earth to the moon, you know, a foot in both worlds sort of thing. Um, and it sort of incorporates sort of this swoosh and star from back in the old possum patch to sort of tie them together. Um, same general outline shape with the big word at the bottom, but different colors to symbolize a different program. And then we got into a discussion um, about the word manned here. Nobody seemed to have a problem with it, but it was a little gendered and they thought, well, I, I don't know if this was quite right. So I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Um, swapped out the 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 marmot. Uh, plus marmot is the name of a big outdoor clothing company. So we didn't want to do like um, copyright violations or anything. And so marmot uh, eventually merged into uh, changed into the otter here. Whoops. Yes, yeah, space yeah. otter. Oh, we'll make him bigger. There we go. Um, so <laughs> the thing just changed the critter inside the suit and so friendly and wise. Yeah, he's he's a friendly little otter in there. Um, <laughs> no spear, no spears in his hand. 
No, no spear, just just a little shovel. And I had to make it long and, and skinny sticking forward to, to cover up the seam between the earth and the, the moon image. So uh, okay, this is this is really cool. This is like the the director's cut of all of the patches that you know I've seen that I've probably worn on my spacesuit, but um this kind of brings us into the bigger discussion. We know from our patches, we know in the space world, there's often a lot of hidden meaning, a lot of um, symbols. Um, and, you know, can you talk about that, like how how that's evolved, how, why it's important, what you've seen, what symbol, symbology you try to build into your patches? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, let's, let's go down the list. Um, actually, here I've got, um, I've got a website where I post a lot of different pictures and things. Yeah, and let's put this in the chat for um, those who may want to visit because I've taken a look and it's very, very cool. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's just tomfoltsart, all one word, dot com. Um, I will do that right now. But uh, let's just go down through a few of these. Uh, with this one, I mean, this is the, the, the double IAS main logo fancied up a bit with some colors to to make into a more embroidered patch. I mean, the basic logo is just a single color. That was the purpose of um, something that could go on a letterhead, maybe be embossed or something. So you just want one single solid color. This one is the same thing, just a little fancier. But uh, with this one, I was uh, thinking about doing it. This part here is supposed to re represent the limb of the earth, um, uh, sort of dark over here, sort of heading into a new dawn sort of thing. And then the swoosh here is arcing all the way across the earth. So people from all around the world coming together to explore out past the stars. So that was the thought behind this logo. Um, you know, everybody from around the world together out past the stars. Um, when we did the um, possum redesign, because the old one had um, the old X-Core Lynx space plane over here. And unfortunately, that program sort of went away. Um, I heard somebody in Florida might be trying to buy it and, and start it up again, but- uh, Interesting. Uh, anyway, he wanted a little more um, vehicle agnostic patch. So we can, this one, this shows the, uh, the uh, suborbital swoosh here going through the, the ring of noctilucent clouds. Um, these color bands back here represent the atmosphere of the Earth. The Earth down here is in, in darkness because you would launch with, with the Possum mission. Um, you would launch at nighttime. As you flew up, you would get back up into the sunshine because um, it which illuminates the noctilucent clouds. So this part here, you can sort of see the swoosh coming up from the darkness, emerging into the light. Um, and then the orange here is, you know, partially it's just to make a little more color pop, and partially it's supposed to show the the burn phase um, from a suborbital rocket so it burns for a while then coasts all the way up and comes back down and then the uh, the atmospheric bands here I actually size them appropriately for the um, uh, troposphere and the stratosphere and the mesosphere so those are actual you know proper distances there um, let's see that's super this is cool and the the other part I'll just interject here. The other thing I'll add is it's it's really neat to be part of the the history and have you know the the quote unquote older or original patches because we're we're evolving with the with the organization and with spaceflight. So I remember my very first possum patch had that X core links on it, and um, you know I remember the updated patch and now the double IAS patch. So it's sort of like you know this is really a trip down memory lane, which is really yeah that's that's the one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, so a bunch of us oldies or barnacles, we will definitely have these. I'm dating myself a bit here. So, hey, question: Can you scroll back up to the possum? I have some. I have a specific question mm -hmm. about the hair. Why? Why that specific hairstyle? I have no idea. The <laughs> I did not design the possum character. Um, the original possum patch. You know, this was around before my time, and so. I just used that design. I asked Jason for a high resolution copy of it. He sent it to me, I plugged it in. Gotcha. I, I have no idea how that possum got the hairstyle. So um, we're unraveling a lot of mysteries today, but that's not one of them. The mystery of the possum hair. One of them. Um, if we pop down to possum 13 though, yeah. um, 
this one I, I did design again this is for the the girls um, uh, elementary uh, high school outreach program so you know since it's aimed at sort of a younger crowd um, I wanted to make it you know sort of cartoony uh, a little more fun and accessible and, and kind of like the original possum here um, so I made Polly Possum the, the, the sort of female version um, and you know, tried to make her sort of gesturing, hey, come with me, let's go on a grand adventure out to the stars sort of thing. Yeah. Um, let's see, what other ones? Out Astronaut, this one um, I mean, is obviously full of symbolism. You got the yeah. pink triangle, you've got the, I mean, this one just sort of came together. It, it made sense. Um, when you think about the um, NASA astronaut logo, it's sort of the, the the three spikes going up to the star with a oval around it. Mm -hmm. um, I just took the same exact thing and made it, you know, going through uh, the male female symbol. And the way this fit, um, you put it on a triangle. You got this part coming down, this part sticking up to the side. You need something going up here. That's going to be the star and, and and the rainbow's trail. So. Um, and just it, a cool note on that, like when you, you go from design to actually holding these patches in your hand, because um, I've, had, I've held a, a few of these patches in my hand, and what was really cool was the out astronaut patch. Um, someone, yes, someone brought that to our most recent uh, Bio 104 test in in October and I see some of my classmates from that I see Guadalupe is on and what was really cool is we got to hold up that patch to um the IBA suit and just take a photograph of hey you know this is really an inclusive program if you are part of the LGBTQ community you still belong here if you love space and love operations um so that was really powerful and like so to take something um that you designed and then you know Use it as a tool to let people know that hey, there's space for you too. That was that was an awesome moment. Yeah, that, that's great. It's um, I, I was really happy with the way this one turned out. Um, it just this one was one of my first that sort of transitioned from the old solid cartoony type style mm -hmm. to a more polished style. Um, sometimes when I'm making them, you have to think about what the main purpose is, and if it's you know for a corporate logo, you want to solid single color like the nike swoosh or the the apple logo or something very basic um if you want it for uh, like an embroidered mission patch you want a few limited colors you know whatever colors the threads are you don't want like a lot of you know shininess and gradients and, and shadows and things like that um but then jason said you know hey if you send me a, a final version i can have the patch makers simplify it down for you and so I was given a little more freedom to to make them, you know, like this one is designed for more of a, a website or a print quality. So, you know, I can you have to go wild and, and do all the fun little um, details and things on it. Um, and just a question. So I yeah. see elements of the pride rainbow in here, but I also see some black. Is there some specific symbolism to the black in, in the rainbow? Um, the The black, well, there's the black background, uh, mm -hmm. which, I mean, in a way represents outer space. Uh, mm -hmm. In a way, is just there to make a contrast to make the the colors really pop out. Um, gotcha. And, and with the NASA, the astronaut logo, you've got the three individual stripes going up to the point. So the black helps. You know, it, it offsets them. You can see the three different paths. Um, gotcha. White background just. It was too bright. It didn't. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Um, but really, there's there's no deep underlying, you know, soul crushing meaning for the black background. <laughs> it just makes it look good and it makes the colors pop. Or or if there is, it's one of those secrets that will stay hidden today. <laughs> uh, if it is, it's one of those secrets that's even hidden from me. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more, yes, if you want. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, tell tell us about this, and I can also chime in because this is one of the ones I was lucky enough to have input in. So yeah, let's. This is 
we're not supposed to have favorites, but this is definitely my favorite. Well, let's um, see what we can find. dig into the archives here. Um, where's Space Mission? Yeah, because we went through many evolutions. So for those in the in the audience, um, the one that we're pulling up is the Space Medicine Group um, patch. And this came to life when Jason said, hey, is it time that we have a Space Medicine Group? And my answer was, of course, yes. And he said, okay, well, what about, what about a patch? And then I remember it was lots and lots and lots of back and forth, um, but this was the ultimate that we were all super happy with. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, it started off with, all of these start off with like just a super simple sketch just to see how it works. And the idea was um, the, the six stars arranged with the negative space in between, sort of looking like the um, six pointed asterisk, like the EMT symbol. Yeah. Uh, and then with the, the rocket blasting off um, with, well, there's the, the classic, um, how do you pronounce it, Rada Asclepius. Um, it was just uh, the standard medical symbol. Um, a lot of people think it's the, the rod with the two snakes around it, but that, that's a different sort of thing. So I think that's the symbol uh, for thieves. Yeah, the, the single snake is, is the one we were looking for. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so trying to think of you know the, the EMT and the medical symbol, but combine it with rockets and things. So start off with sketches like that, did a few um, quick uh, uh, illustrator renders and and it turned out that the well uh, from that we went on to let's do this one did something like this. This is the, the first, first actual finished design that I sent out. Um, yeah, I remember the colors of the, the single strand of, uh, that's also uh, symbolizing DNA, I think, yeah? It's supposed to symbolize DNA. Um, there's no particular meaning why, you know, like, you know, A has to be red and, you know, A, T, G, C. Yeah, I, I did four colors because there are the, the four base pairs, so they're all all partnered up. The reds and the yellows are always partnered, and the blues and the greens are always partnered. You know, try and make it accurate, but I don't know which one is which. Um, and, and then you make the DNA spiral. I, I figured, what sort of medical spirally thing instead of just a snake? You know, DNA that sounds fun. Um, so put that around the rocket trail. Uh, and back then it was still, you know, we thought this was be an offshoot of the, uh, Project Possum, so we still had. Uh, Project Possum at the bottom. We still had the, the Possum character you know, front and center. And as these programs have progressed, they've been more IIAS, less under the Possum brand. So um, the old Possum fella had to go away. <laughs> and, and Gone but not forgotten. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this one was a little too cluttered. Uh, you couldn't really see the, the six pointed asterisk in there. Um, the rocket was really bland. Uh, and then we moved on to this one. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it's a lot more noticeable here. Um, and moved on to this one. This is the next one. Just turned it to the side to make it look a little bit more like that lynx shooting off to the side on the original possum patch. Uh, but it, it, this one still struck me as kind of plain. Um, and then we eventually ended up oops, back with this one. We got rid of the possum, um, fancied up the rocket a little bit, made a more obviously DNA sort of uh, train here. That was interesting to do because I had to go into Illustrator and do like a, a 3D render of each little dumbbell here and then put them all together, twist a little bit and add it and twist a little bit and add it all. Oh. To make it copy and paste and, and and put some behind it. And I know, I mean, if this is a, a rocket trail, you shouldn't have shadows here, but it had to make it look sort of spirally. You know, it should be lit up. <laughs> okay. um, but, you know, you, you have to take some artistic liberties to make it look good. Um, yeah. And then in the background here, I actually went and drew, um, um, the, took the constellation, um, uh, let's see, how do you pronounce that one? Ophiuchus. Uh, the, the serpent bearer 
which in, in ancient Greece is related to uh, Asclepius. So this constellation here also represents the, the staff and the, the rod. So it, that it, is it, cool. I didn't know about that one. That is so cool. Yeah, I try and make it accurate and, and add some little subtle things that. Uh, and and this is where you talk about us, um, you know, honoring Project Possum, but also recognizing that we're now part of what we'll, our organization has evolved to be IAS. So we see both elements here. Right. Project Possum is still mentioned down there, but you've got the, the glowing background of the IAS logo in the back. And the IAS rocket. Yeah. Yeah, I had to, had to put the logo and everything on there, too. <laughs> So good. Yeah. So this, I mean, there's a reason this one's my favorite. Um, it's it's so great. And so I just wanted to take a little bit of a sidetrack as we go through all of these these patches. Um, you've talked a little bit, you've alluded a little bit to your process. So in the past, you know, it started with a simple PowerPoint. You also said you sketch. Um, what other graphical tools? Um, so you're still sketching to this day. Um, what other graphical design tools are you using as you make a patch? Um, mainly, well, let's see, let's pick one. I, I want to talk about this one again later. Um, yes, yeah. Um, just things like the outside where you've got the, the text and the geometric shapes, you know, points and rings and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I use Illustr Adobe Illustrator for that one to, uh, to, to get all the layers, make everything look nice and sharp and exactly where it's supposed to go. Um, and then I did, for the background here, um, did a little Photoshop on the background. And then the front part, the, this whole thing is um, hand drawn, hand painted with a program called uh, Procreate, which is an iPad app, uh, which lets you just use the, the Apple Pencil and, and draw directly on it. And so um so some of these are and then this this character um i'd actually made earlier as a little uh, 3d model a 3d printable model of a little astronaut with posable arms and legs and things so i just took that you know 3d model and posed it in different positions so i could get you know get get the right angles for for the two different characters here so and that that kind of alludes to a question that I had, and that I've also seen come up in the in the chat. Um, how like how long? Do, how many hours go into a single patch? And how much? I know uh, we we saw from the space medicine group that there's often a lot of revision, a lot of back and forth. On average, um, how much back and forth is there? Like, is that typical? Was that way above and beyond? Was that way less? Yeah, drawing. Let's see. It, it really depends. Um, some of them, like Possum 13, I put it together uh, in a few hours, sent it out. Everybody said, hey, that's super. Don't change it. It's like, OK, if that's what you want, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, other ones, you know, this one, each, you know, each individual drawing probably took a couple hours. Um, and then it extends over maybe a couple weeks of discussions you know I'll, I'll make one send it off to jason send it off to anybody else who might be interested they put in their input um i go back i make some changes send it out again there's more discussion so typically i would say a normal one takes maybe you know, maybe six to ten revisions until we get something we're happy with um, really neat Let's go back to that um, Space for All Nations patch because that is just, it's its a stunning patch. Like it has so much vibrancy, so much color. Um, you know, it's its really a, a patch that stands out. Yeah, th this one, um, I, I can't say I have a favorite, you know, among all my children, but I, I'm really <laughs> happy with the way this one turned out. Yeah. Uh, and and this one probably has the longest history behind it. Um, if we go back into the archives here, um, where's it? this one started off years ago, um, where Jason wanted some sort of international program. Didn't have a name or anything. Um, just said we want to do something international. 
so I came up with a, just like another quick sketch. Um, oh, that's cool. Looks like a superhero logo. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but I figured if it's all nations, you get like a compass rose, all points of the compass, you got the entire globe. Um, no actual uh, countries or, or continents shown on the globe to, to make it a little more generic. So could apply to everybody or anybody. Um, and then, I, I don't know, the swoopy star was just to look good and get the, the green and gold colors. Um, and so we said, okay, let's see what we can do. And we started making some, um, let's see what I can do, that's bigger. Uh, started making uh -huh. some different looks. And so we had, uh, there was also a huge discussion that went into the name of the program too. Um, Mm -hmm. of, yeah, I remember that part. Yeah, it, it turned into, you know, the green outline. You still see the the, the globe and, and the four points of the compass, the pretty purple nebula in the background just to make it look good. Mm -hmm. um, awesome character here. Um, and, and speaking of, of the names, I got to throw this one in here. One of my ideas for the name that was shot down really quickly, but uh, I like, was, was Passel. Project Passel because you know Passel oh. was possum, um, and and so I thought possum agronomy and space science for every land. I said possum. Jason said no. So it's clever. Project. I like that. I I appreciate the sentiment. That's really clever. I, I liked it too, but you know then again, part of the line of thinking was that uh, we would get away from from clever acronyms. Because while it makes sense in English, you know, you try and translate it to a different language, it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so that, that's why we went back just space for all nations. It's a simple phrase, sums it all up, and, you know, it can be translated. The, the idea. That being, that being said, I do want to reverse engineer a course called Pisces now after seeing the space fish because I want an excuse to use that, that patch now. Well, bring back Pisces here. Here's some yeah. of the other. Hashtag bring back Pisces. Bring back Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and eventually we got rid of the possum character altogether. So it was just Space for All Nations. Simple patch like that. And I think mm -hmm. uh, something like this is what we used for a while. No, no, uh, we went with this one. When it was still a possum patch, we went with this one for a while, mm -hmm. uh, for a year or so. Um, and then uh, last year, Jason came back to me and said, you know what, we're, we're moving away from the possum branding. We're going back to the double IAS. Um, can we update this? And, you know, at first brought this one back and thought, okay, well, we can do something like this, just take the possum off. Um, but it seemed a little simple, a little bland. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. what, what else can we do with the design? And then I started playing around with ideas like, uh, um, but what if we change it up a bit? Um, instead of having just the, the spike, we can do something like, a, you know, we've still got the green circle, we still got sort of the four points, but now it's sort of a sunburst going over the edge of the globe. And it's reflected in, you know, like a space helmet. So it's like generic space helmet reflecting the globe and everything. Um, Ignore the fact that if it reflected and you saw it the right way around in the reflection that in real life, when you're looking at it, the IIS logo would be backwards. Uh, so oh, you know, yeah. I think about when I'm drawing these things, it doesn't make sense, but um, anyway. Um, Tom, just wanted to pass on some of the um, comments here. So Guadalupe says, I am obsessed with the new IAS patch. Uh, agree with that. Yvette says, wow. Um, I didn't know that Jason's, Jason's mom designed the possum. Really? Oh, that, yeah. What? Is that, can you confirm? Uh, Yvette said I, she has a name. Yeah, go ahead. I will confirm that Jason has told me twice that his mom designed it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, we need to get her on here next and talk about the possum and the evolution and the hair. And I know there was a question about the expression. Um, 
I'm impressed with your version control. Like you're so organized with all of these patches. Like you seem to have each one in its own dedicated folder. You know exactly where to find it. You you know which version was where. Like do you uh, are are you always this organized? Is this part of your process, or has well, this kind of something you've evolved towards? Kind of, but I, I rearranged these to get ready for this presentation. So there there were little bits and pieces everywhere, and I've always wanted to bring them back together in a nice organized way. Um, you know, I've got some Illustrator files over there. I've got some of the Procreate saved on some old iPad somewhere. So I had to download them and, and save them on here because I like seeing the process I go through. I, I want to make sure I've, I remember how I did it. Yeah, this is such a cool process. Now, I know I want to touch on something you said. Um, you, you, you're not allowed to have favorites, uh, but were there ones that were especially meaningful to you or that you really, you know, particularly remember because the design was so interesting or so challenging? Um, yeah, again, getting back to this Space for All Nations one um, before <laughs> yeah. all the dings and interruptions. Um, uh, yeah. This one just had a lot of interesting elements and, and thought going into it. Um, I think we talked about getting the, you know, the helmet view. Um, and so I thought I would do something like, um, like this. So oh, cool. Um, with, with the helmet. So the idea behind that one was that um, the background was taken from an old 1689 world map. Um, wow. You know, since it's for all nations, you know, yeah. uh, um, old timey map, and you can see sort of on here. There's they always did this sort of black and white bar around there. Um, uh huh. So that's where we get some of the the elements. Let me do this bigger. But I really I like the color scheme on that. That's really cool. That sepia background. And it looked kind of okay, except then we started thinking, you know, it's kind of muted, it's kind of bland. Um, mm. And with the old time maps, it, it didn't really say space. And start thinking about that time, while it was a big age of exploration, it was also an age of, you know, uh, of, you know, empire building and exploitation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, not yeah, what we're going for. Not exactly what we want to be looking at. So instead, I uh, looked around again, found this one, which is a French 1878 celestial map. Um, so I, I clipped this part out, put it in Photoshop, um, messed around with it, is this it, to get it looking like this, you know, inverted the colors. And so it looks, you know, a nice navy blue like, like space. Um, and that became the background for the new version. Um, so that's back here. And and I, I also was happy because with you've got the old time Starfield in the background. Yeah. Polaris is here, which does, which I, I positioned properly to line up with the, the north arrow, because Polaris mm -hmm. has to be north. Um, and the way it worked in the old one, you know, the the, this point over here was going through the E of space, but on the map, that's the direction west. Um, so it didn't make any sense. But when you're looking at a, a planisphere, it's a star chart, you're holding it up overhead. So E is to the left. So now, since it's a star chart, this makes sense again. So I was happy with that. Um, yeah, and it's, it's it's very it's very historical. It's very you know embraces exploration and it's, it's very inclusive. But the the thing that really I love about this is the color scheme. It's just forward looking. It's exploratory and it just exudes hope to me. So I just and, it's yeah, that was very the point. Memorable. Yeah, you've got the two characters. The idea here, um, you can sort of see uh, the, the top of this one is just a white helmet. This one has the blue stripe on the helmet. That's sort of going back to the old Apollo program when mm -hmm. the mission would have like a red stripe on the top of their helmet, the red stripes on the sleeves so they could tell who was who in the pictures. Um, so the idea here is that the the double IAS leader here is sort of a mentor. And, and this would be any of the new emerging space nations characters, you know, looking towards the future, looking towards the new sunrise, being inspired. 
while we're back here looking more towards them, you know, making sure they're okay, you know, guiding them, helping them forward. So that's and this is perfect, perfect timing to mention that because I just got word that our current AST class has beamed in. So welcome. So right now they may be the astro um, in front, but someday you all will be the mentor leading in the new AST class. So perfect timing. So just a question here, Tom. Jason's mm -hmm. now in the room. Oh, great. So maybe he can answer the question about the original possum drawing and if indeed it was his mom. Oh, well, yeah. So, Jason, we, we've looked at the evolution of the very first possum patch, the next iteration with a without a specific suborbital vehicle, uh, and then eventually the double IAS patch. And so my question was, um, is there a story behind the possum's hair? And there was a question about the expression. And then it came up that your mom is the origin of the possum. So is that, can you confirm? Well, uh, there is some truth to that. I, I won't give on the, the credit of the, the possum logo. There was an inspiration uh, of that, but yes, the suit and the, uh, and the design and then you know, just a layout of that. Um, I, Mom is a fine artist, but she is a fine artist, but she also does some um, commercial art. So I think it was more kind of putting that together in a logo design. But, you know, that, that's still not her forte. Uh, you know, what uh, Tom did, in, you know, in evolving that patch was just was just right on. And uh, it's already late. I, if I ask questions, uh, Tom, if we, if we repeat what you said, but uh, you've got the, the class 2202 here at your disposal. Awesome. So what I'm hearing is I need to grab my original patch and I need to get both autographs from Tom and Jason's mom. That is so cool. Uh, Tom, have we have have we showcased all of the patches? I want to make sure I don't miss any. I think so. I think I saw the FTE one. Um, that one's brand brand new. Yeah, this one um, is for new flight test engineering. Uh, I'm not sure how that will actually transfer into embroidery. Uh, it, a lot of little details, on that. but it, it's more of a program emblem sort of thing. And I, I don't yeah. know, but but the idea here was to try and balance the uh, the the hard mathematics engineering calculating side, you know, on the engineering half, with the actual you know, beauty of going up, getting in an airplane, going up, seeing if it actually works in the real wor world on the flight test side. Um, so that's why you've got the one airplane with the two halves balanced between the two worlds. And then I, I like this one because, you know, I always like to have a little fun with these. Um, and, you know, some of these you get just a standard um, hexagon or circle or something as the outline. But this one I thought, well, what new thing could I make as the outline for this one? And if you look at this, uh, it's actually a normal business sized envelope turned upside down with the flap open. So that's what this shape is. It's just an envelope because, you know, flight test engineering is pushing the envelope. So, yeah, so a that, visual pun there. That leapt out, at, leapt out at me because I immediately thought, I immediately thought pushing the envelope. I, I flashed back to the graph of, you know, the, this envelope of safety. And I was like, why did that come to mind? And my brain picked up on it before my, my I could articulate it. Oh, good. Well, here I thought I was being yeah. subtle. I guess. Yeah. No, I immediately thought of that, and I, I zoomed in on the the mathematical um, characters, and I thought, well, that's not it. But now I see why. That's so. That's very clever. I love it. So one thing I want to bring up, since we do have class twenty two oh two here, um, is you know maybe passing. We we talked a little bit about the imp importance of mentorship and passing the torch. Um, so one thing that we do within our classes, in addition to having Tom design our official patches, is um, each class, um, depending on, you know, how organized, how inspired, how creative they are, tend to de design their own patches. And I'm actually going to show you one that uh, one of my fellow barnacles, who's been around for a very long time, designed for our patch. Um, and then maybe I'll turn it over to you with a question. So again, we're speaking about symbology. So Brian Posey, who's been around as long as I have, um, maybe a little less long, has designed, maybe, no, I'm sorry, this wasn't Brian. This was uh, Richard Blakeman, who's been around since the very beginning, who designed this for class 1502. 
And again, encompassing the symbology. So everything from the class number to the suborbital flight trajectory to the countries represented to the number of um, stars for the number of candidates, as well as the um, uh, names of everyone who took part. And I see Aaron's on the call. So Aaron was in that class. And then per laborum aid fortitude at Astra. So, so through hard work and effort to the stars. Um, so maybe um, inspiring class 2202, um, if they're so inspired to either make their own patch or work with you to create their own patch. Tom, do you have any words on, we talked a little bit about symbology, about creating meaning, about creating colors that pop making something visually stunning. Do you have any words of advice to them? Um, yeah, first I want to point out the one I brought up here um, was for my class, 1601. And, yeah. Uh, this one actually was made by Brian Posey. I didn't make this one. Uh, he got in before I did. So I had an idea for it, but but he got in and, it, you know, here we go. We've, we've got this one. And he was at least forward thinking enough to put the Spaceship 2 in there instead of the links. So that's always good. Um, Lots of familiar names on there. Yeah, there, there were a lot of uh, big names in our class. It was, it was a good group. Um, but but I would say if if you're actually designing it as a patch, you'd want to um, keep a, a, a limited color palette. You you just maybe I think official NASA patches use eight color up to eight colors. Um, but you know, the more colors you add, the more expensive it is to make the patches. Um, you want to have strong symbolic elements, um, nothing, not too many little tiny thin lines, uh, big bold shapes. Um, everything on the patch should have some sort of meaning. Um, you don't want to just throw stuff in there randomly. Um, yeah, so, and if if it works, it's got, you know, everybody's name on there, that'd be great. Because uh, really patches are a way to to show unity for, for a program. And, and and it's kind of kind of a pride thing, you know, you, you, you wear the patch and it's like, hey, I'm part of something bigger than, than just me. And, and we're all working together to do something really cool. Uh, and, you know, it, it's been a real honor to to get to play around and, and doodle and make up these things and and then you know actually see them show up. You know, I, I like look at the pictures from the underwater training classes or or any anything, and I see you know there's that big logo I created, um, you know, stuck on hardware and and you know eventually going up on a space mission or something. Uh, and, and so it's nice to say, hey, I'm I'm part of that a little bit. So very, very well said. Um, I'm, I'm I'm grinning and smiling over here because everything you just said is exactly what I feel about. You know, every course patch I've been through. When I look at the AAAS patch, it really is that hey, this is this is a team, this is a family, and we're all part of it now. So uh, hopefully, AST um, class 2202, you're getting some ideas for inspiration. So it's it's really a way of kind of um commemorating our our um basically our, our, our operational experience our team building our legacy building through double ias together so really patches are, are they you know everyone tells a story and they're so you know it's, it's so amazing to look back on um oh looks like there's some questions looks like jason has a question so jason if you want to uh, i'm happy for you all to open up your mics or to type into the chat Okay, thanks, Shauna. Uh, uh, Tom, this is this is great. I, I had a question, and I, I looked through all of your art, and they're so different. And you know, something that's fairly more minimalistic is you know, IIS to you know the, the the nuances of a space for all nations, the whole spectrum. Um, you know, and I was always curious. The ones that I've always thought were were the most profound, you know, is you know the uh, the outreach programs, and uh, you know, the some about the essence. Of allyship is the ability to project yourself into the experience of others and i was wondering if you found a particular challenge in like possum 13 and out astronaut and space for all nations um you know coming at these you know as a 
you know, as a straight cisgendered American male, and and being able to hit each of these and and the feedback I've got on all were that they're you know they're they're right on and by people that come from each of the communities that those outreach programs represent was there a particular challenge or a particular uh, uh, a difference that you took into the approach of of each of those logos? Well, when I first start, I, I mean, I, I I first start just by brainstorming what sort of um, icons and, and imagery might be associated with a particular program. Um, so for instance, like out astronaut, you've got things like triangles and the rainbows and, and the male female symbols and things like that. And, and I'm also thinking, um, okay, what could I do that would possibly offend anybody? And I want to avoid that. Um, because I, I don't, there are a lot of things I don't even know. I, I could put it in there and it'd be offensive and I'd never even know it. Uh, so I have to be very careful about doing that sorts of things. That, um, so I try and you know make a first sketch and make a first draft. And then that's where the, the revision process is really helpful because you know, Jason, you've known uh, for just about all of these, you've seen them through the ages, all the different revisions uh, that, that have come through. So. I'll come up with one idea, send it off to you. And, and I think one of the phrases I use you know, all the time in all my emails is everything is editable. So here, here's an idea. I can change any part of it. Um, and, and then through you know, a bunch of us working together and talking things out, you know, whether it's you know, the imagery here or the, like we said before, there, there are all kinds of names and ideas thrown out for what eventually became Space for All Nations. Um, uh, all of it. It, it. It's. I'm the one who you know draws the final image, but the design is definitely a collaboration between a lot of people to try and get something that that represents you know the team and the program and and everything we're trying to accomplish. Hopefully that answered your question a little bit. That's great. As uh, an aside, Tom. Sorry, go ahead, Jason. No, th thanks for thanks for sharing your insight, Tom. It's indeed. Uh, Guadalupe says, "I love your work, Tom." Which patch has been the hardest to design and the one that took the longest to finish? Uh, and also, any favorites? Hardest to design and favorites. Um, let's see. I really like the way Space for All Nations turned out. Um, and with this one, let's see if I can get the, the I, I had fun doing all the details on that. Um, because if, if you see, I mean, I got deep into all the little, ah, every, all the little, um, I found a special brush that let me do like textures on, on, on the fabric design on the suit. Um, Holy cow! Got in that there, is cool. Went in, did like all the little lines to make these like stripes look embroidered on the fabric. All the little um, it looks like stitch marks on there. The the patch I did as a separate file and then put it in there and, and sort of bent it, warped it to to make it look like it's sort of on the sleeve, but you know a, a hard mm -hmm. stiff patch that's not quite sitting on it. And then I also left a tiny little easter egg on the front person here if you look at this little control panel thing down in the front if you zoom really far in hey look it's my name in there so <laughs> i had to sign it a little bit in there that is cool but That's yeah I, i'm just really happy with the way this turned out a little shadows and, and reflections and everything again I, I have no idea how jason's going to get this embroidered but uh but, but I like that being said, we do have we do have some patches up for sale on the AIS store, I think. So um, if that if I could trouble you to put that link in the chat, um, because I know I will be grabbing some space med patches um, <laughs> right after this. Um, so is it fair to say that every single one of your patch designs have been, been in some way collaborative, even if you're doing most of the designing, it sounds like you're iterating with the team. Like have any of them been done in a silo as one person? 
Um, let's see. Let me go through these. Not really. I mean, even even the logos. No, all of them. It started with you know Jason saying, "Hey, you want to take a stab at doing, you know, an astronaut? You want to take a stab at doing, you know, space medicine?" And it's like, okay, let me try it, and then I'll, I'll send them off to him, and, and he'll send them back. And there, there's a lot of back and forth between all of these. Um, what was I going to say? Even even something somewhat simple like, excuse me, this is the the mission patch. The, the the embroidered patch like um, that we came up with, based on the logo, for for Kelly's eventual flight, and then hopefully all the other flights that come up. We actually had to change the logo a little bit. No, normally, you don't want to change corporate logos much, but we had to shorten down the spike a little just to make it you know, fit on an actual physical embroidered patch better. So, the, the real one the spikes a little bit longer here. It's shortened down a little bit. I think that's a pretty good compromise. Yeah, and you know what? I think it's the perfect metaphor for space operations in that nothing is done without a team. And it's, you know, you go from concept to design, to testing, to iteration, to retesting and uh, eventual deployment. So uh, maybe that's a perfect place to end off on. You've been really gracious with your time. You've even stayed extra. So thank you so much. Um, Tom, is there anywhere people can find you online if they want to learn more about your work? Um, I do have a website, and that's what I've been looking at here. It's tomfaultsart.com, just my first name, last name, the word art. So T-O-M-F-O-L-T-Z-A-R-T.com. Um, Perfect. And that has you know, one section, the logos, has all the the, the possum and I, double IAS patches we've been looking through. But then there are also you know, areas for, you know, sometimes I draw cute little animals and things. And so, uh, everything like oh, that's that. right. Jason missed the part where we decided, I decided that we're resurrecting um, the Pisces program so we can have a space fish logo. So, Jason, surprise. Yeah, maybe we can do that with the underwater suit, yeah. Yes, love it. Uh, perfect. Well, thank you all so much. Um, Tom's logo or Tom's website will be on our Instagram page, um, AAAS underscore NLC uh, on Instagram uh, for the next week. We will throw it up into the chat one more time. And thank you for joining us for our AAAS Artists Hour. Um, we will be holding our next session um, in the next month here. Stay tuned for details. Those will be on across all our social media channels, including our AAAS possible. 13 out astronaut um, Twitter channels and on Instagram. So thank you so much, AST2202. Wonderful to meet you. Hope you are having a figurative blast and welcome to the family. Absolutely. Welcome to the family, everybody. Mike's open here at uh, class 2202. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.